Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webcast. Today, our topic is the electromagnetic flowmeter designed for industrial process control. My name is Ke Li. I am a system application engineer in the process control system application team, automation energy sensor business unit of analog devices. Here's the agenda for our webcast. In the beginning, I will give you a brief introduction on the theory of operation for the electromagnetic flow sensor and meter, and we will look at some of the characteristics of the sensor output signal. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the signal conditioning of the electromagnetic flow sensors, the comparison between the synchronous demodulation architecture versus the digital oversampling architecture. We will discuss the considerations about the common mode rejection ratio and noise for the analog front-end circuit. We have some evaluation results from the prototypes of the analog synchronous demodulation architecture. The typical performance will be shown. Then I will present the digital oversampling analog front-end test circuit, talk about its advantage versus the analog synchronous demodulation architecture in space, cost, power, and performance. The statement is supported by evaluation results got from the tests from the prototypes. To the end, we look at the sensor drive circuit based on the accoupler and switching mode power supply. The last is the conclusion of this webcast. The, the feature of electromagnetic flow sensor are no pressure loss, no impact from the basality, fluid density, temperature, pressure, and conductivity. It is suitable to measure pulp, slurry, and sewage with high accuracy. This is a typical block diagram for the industrial electromagnetic flow meter. A uh, EM flow meter system consists of a power supply, sensor coil excitation, signal conditioning, analog to digit converter, processor, di display, keyboard, logic I.O., and multiple communications like photo to milliamp, Heart R45 to 32, Profit Bus, Model Bus, Foundation. Let's, took, let's take a look at the theory of operation of the electromagnetic flow meters. The operation principle is based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It states that a voltage will be in induced in a conductor moving through a magnetic field. The liquid serves as the conductor, the magnetic field is created by energized coil outside the flow tube. The magnitude of the induced voltage is directly proportional to the velocity and the type of the conductor, the diameter of the pipe, and the strength of the magnetic field, as shown in an image. Mathematically, we can state Faraday's law as E equal to K times B times L and times V, where V is the velocity of the conductive fluid, B is the magnetic field strength, and L is the spacing between the pickup electrodes. E is the voltage measured across the electrodes, and K is a constant. B and L and K are either fixed or can be calibrated. So the equation re reduced to the E is pro proportional to the B. So most of the electromagnetic flow meters are using a low frequency DC rectangle waveform to excite the sensor coil at 125 or 116 or 110, under 8 a quarter and half of the power line frequencies. Low frequency excitation use a constant amplitude alternating direction current to achieve low zero drift. Here we have a closer look at the common mode voltage in the sensor output. The scope plots were taken from the sensor output signal of the electromagnetic flow sensor. Equal potential should appear on both electrodes if they're use the same material and have the same surface condition. In reality, however, the polarization potential 
structure slowly at the low frequency AC signal because physical friction or electromechanical effect between the fluids and uh, electrodes. Any mismatch would also show up as a differential mode noise. The bias voltage together with the electron potential presents a common mode voltage of a few hundred millivolts to above about one volt to the first stage amplifier input. So the electronics must have enough common mode rejection. The scope plot shows one electrode's potential from a differential system with 0.28 volts DC bios and 0.1 volts peak-to-peak -peak noise on a 316 stainless steel electrodes installed on a 50 millimeter diameter water pipe. You can see how bad and strong the common mode voltage is, or how long the how low the bare meaningful flow rate signal is hitting among that. Yeah, the sensor's common mode output voltage must be attenuated by the common mode rejection ratio of the uh, transmitter electronics, in which the front end amplifier plays the most important part. For example, with the 110 dB common mode rejection ratio, the 0.28 volt DC bias can be reduced to 0.28 microvolt. With a 100 dB common mode reject ratio, the rejected bias would be 2.8 microvolt. This offset can be calibrated out or removed by AC coupling the signal. However, the AC components in the common mode appears as noise at the, at the amplifier output is not easily removed by AC coupling. Measures should be taken otherwise. It could degrade the noise performance. With a 120 dB common mode reject ratio, the 0.1 volt pixel peak AC noise can be reduced to 0.1 micro volt. A 100 dB common mode reject ratio will only reject the a noise to down to one microvolt. Thus, we should well understand that the common mode reject ratio is crucial. Although the specific implementation could be very different from one manufacturer to another, the sensor signal conditioning circuitry for the electromagnetic flow meter can be classified into two major categories by how the signal is processed the analog synchronous demodulation architecture and the digital oversampling architecture. The analog demodulation architecture is conventional but still widely used in the industry. It usually has a pre-amplifier, an amplifier and, and bypass and bandpass filter, sampling hold, analog to digital converter and, and the microcontroller. A typical signal chain is shown in, in this diagram. The sensor output at a micro volt to millivolt is firstly amplified to integrated or discrete instrumentation amplifier. It is crucial to amplify this interested signal as much as possible, but also to avoid the amplifier output being saturated by the common mode voltage. The gain of the first stage instrumentation amplifier is usually set no more than 10 times. The AC coupling the signal, then use a bandpass filter to amplify the signal by a few tens of a time to volt level. The amplified signal pass, passes a sample and hold circuit controlled by the micro to remove the spikes and become a DC signal. Then the DC goes into AD converter, usually a 16-bit resolution and a few kilo sample per second should be good enough for the analog digital converter in, in this situation. Because the transient is re removed, the demodulation is done by upstream circuitry. So the signal is amplified a few hundred times to volt level. A 
16-bit or more ADC running at a low speed should be generally adequate to send the signal. And since the ADC output data rate is, is low, so no huge processing demand is re required for the micro. The digital oversampling architecture. In this new approach, the circuitry such as analog bandpass filter, the sampling holes, the difference amplifier are eliminated. The analog signal processing, uh, the bandpass filter, sampling holes and difference amplifier now is done in the digital domain because the higher ADC sample rate and less analog signal conditioning and more processing power is needed in the digital domain. Thus, a powerful processor is needed. This new approach has some obvious advantage. The fewer components, lower solution cost, robustness of differential analog signaling, more digital signal processing, make use of the ADC common mode rejection ratio, and can monitor the sensor transient profile. The sensor signal conditioning. The sensitivity of a typical line part electromagnetic flow sensor range typically from 150 microvolts per meter per second to 200 microvolts per meter per second. Let's take 175 microvolts per meter per second for instance. The sensor responds to 3.5 microvolts peak to peak for a 0.01 meter per second flow rate due to alternated excitation. It requires the analog front end noise to be less than 1.75 microvolts to resolve it. Analog devices offers low noise instrumentation amplifiers. For example, AD A228 referred to input noise is only 0.2, no sorry, it's only 0.5 microvolt peak to peak. And AD8220, its noise is only 0.94 microvolts peak to peak. These parts are good, good to support the resolution. When come to the ADC downstream in the signal chain, it is re recommended to allocate one third of the total uh, return in RTI noise budget to the ADC. The analog synchronous demodulation front end has relaxed requirements for the ADC because 100 times of amplifier gain before it. So usually 16 bits is enough. The digital oversampling architecture has a challenging requirement for the ADC noise because the pre-amplifier gain is no more than 10 and the ADC must have a very low noise of over 20 bits resolution. To resolve the 0.05 meter per second flow rate, the ADC must at least 20.7 20, 20 bits noise free. I will show you the result that this requirement is met on our prototype later. We have built a test circuit that uses the synchronous demodulation architecture. The sensor output signal at microvolt to, to millivolt is firstly amplified by AD8228, the instrumentation amplifier. Then use the bandpass filter consisting of AD8222 to amplify the signal by 50 times to both levels. The amplified signal passes the synchronous demodulation circuit built with sample and holes AD8222. 276 difference amplifier to become a DC signal to 807192 sigma delta ADC. The digitized samples are sent to the ARM Cortex M3 microprocessor from analog devices. The microprocessor also controls the sensor coil excitation and the output signal including 4 to 20 milliamp current, frequency pulses and alarm. The isolation is implemented with ADUM uh, 7440X 1KV iCopter digital isolators.
Here show the noise performance of the an analog input signal chain, including all the amplifiers and ADC noise. The circuit was attached to a to an electromagnetic flow signal simulator and let the circuit on to collect 4096 samples at each ADC output data rate. Its results show that plus minus 0.2% typical peak-to-peak -peak resolution was achieved even at the highest 4.8 kilo sample per second data rate. The test circuit was used to excite and test an electromagnetic flow sensor in a calibration lab. The complete front end, including high core mode rejection ratio in input stage, bandpass filter, and gain stages were also tested in the real flow system. Two test boards achieved plus minus 0.2 percent accuracy on the range of 1 meter per second to 5 meter per second with a repeatability of better than 0.055%. Our efforts to explore a better solution didn't stop at the good result already being achieved on the synchronous demodulation approach. We started to look at if we could make the circuit and solution better. Here is the first scheme that came into our scope. To use the digital oversampling architecture, removing the metal stages of bandpass filtering, synchronous demodulation, AD7172-2 ultra low noise 24-bit sigma delta ADC make it possible to have a significant lower ex external amplifier gain. The only amplifier gain here is set to 10 at the AD8220 JFET input instrumentation amplifier. The OP07 plus matched resistor divider translates the single-ended output of the AD8220 into differential signal for the ADC. Then ADC common mode rejection ratio can be fully utilized. Uh, ADST BF 504 uh, 504F digital signal processor is used to process the digital algorithm because the data processing workload is much heavier. This approach would have better than 30 uh, better than 30 percent lower cost and 20 percent lower noise compared with our test circuits with the analog synchronous demodulation architecture and in a much smaller board space, of course. Here is an even lower cost scheme is derived from the previous one with the virtually ignorable compromise in the performance. Thanks to the diversified input types that the AD7172-2 can support, the single ended to differential translation with OPM and the precision translation Resistors is removed. AD7172-2 can take the pseudo differential signal from the upstream amplifier. This results in more than 40% of the cost reduction compared with our analog synchronous demodulation. It might always a smart way to have a plan B. So here we have it here. This is very similar to approach A, except for that the signal single-ended to differential translation is done with AD8475, precision fully differential funnel amplifier. The advantage of this approach is higher integration. The distortion due to the discrete resistors divider in the approach 2A now is minimized with approach to B, the AD82, no, the AD8475 uh, is capable of driving widely varied precision ADCs. This is the early implementation of the test circuit board on which both approach 
approach 2A and 2B and a pseudo differential 2A was tested. Besides this, the PCB includes four different combinations of sensor driver circuitries, the linear regulated current source, the switch mode current source, optical coupler isolation, and analog devices by a copper digital isolation. The circuits are controlled by the PC software of a, of a graphic user interface, the GUI. While uh, SDP-B, the system de demonstration platform from analog devices, the digitized data are sent up to the PC for processing and display. The GUI software also controls output of 4 to 20 mm currents and frequency pulses. These signals output can interface with the flow calibration system so that the test PCB can be connected to real electromagnetic flow sensor and installed in the, into a flow system for system level performance testing. This is a photo of the board. Please note that the board contains three different front end options and four combinations of sensor driver circuitries. Thus, it, it was not optimized for the board size. The analog front end circuitries are located on the down side of the board. The sensor coil excitation circuitries are located on the upper left. You can see a huge size of the power transistor which is a part of the linear regulated current source. In comparison, the switch mode constant current circuitry occupies a much smaller area. The SDP.B communication and control board is on the right down corner. It is attached to the PC through a mini USB connection. Here I would explain how the analog synchronous demodulation is done in the digital domain since the, all the analog circuitry uh, is, related, is related to the synchronous demodulation was removed. The diagram illustrates how the synchronous demodulation is, is done in, in logic. Two dedicated timer on SDP-B board issue the, the coil driver sensor signal 1 and B to, to drive the EM flow meter sensor or the, the simulator. The sensor or simulator output the signal synchronous to the excitation phase. The test circuit samples the sensor signal under the control of SDP-B. The flow rate algorithm needs to know exactly the excitation logic for the synchronous demodulation. Use the AD7172-2, a single error pin to sample the driver control signal 1, so monitor the pulse status for each and every AD sample. And then the algorithm groups the AD samples by pulse status into two phases and removes back samples in each group and averages them. The average of positive excitation phase subtracted by the average of the negative phase give the reading proportional to the instantaneous flow rate. Some post-processing may be needed to scale the flow rate into meter per second units and calibrate it for zero offset, gain error, and non-linearity. The accumulated volume flow can be calculated based on the instantaneous flow rate and the, and the pipe diameter information. The plots here show the example of how the synchronous demodulation is working for two different flow rates. We can see that the AD samples is switching up and down. The rectangle waveform versus the time is due to the alternated sensor excitation, I call them positive phase and negative phase. When making the histogram on this, the AD samples become two peaks. From the separation of these two peaks, one is able to calculate the flow rate. For example, the peak separation at 
zero point five meter per second is about five times of the separation at zero point one meter per second. For the specific gain and sensitivity in the configuration, the flow rate is about five thousand six hundred LSB per meter per second. You can see the response on the range from zero point one meter per second to 15 meters per second is quite linear. The circuit has been tested for the, for the noise. The plot here shows the results and shorted the amplifier input while running the ADC at different output data rates. The test data show the refer to input noise is less than one microvolt or over two 20 bit noise free resolution at a, at an effective data rate on up to 50 sample per second. The result can be mapped to the noise budget and allocation, which was discussed earlier in, in my presentation. So it can solve the 5 millimeter per second instantaneous flow rate, while the effective data refresh rate can be supported up to 50 hertz. The test was done also when the board was attached to a flow rate simulator. I used a precision resistor divider to scale down the simulator's output to get even lower flow rate signals. It shows good linearity response and be able to resolve 5 millimeter meter per second flow rate Uh, a photo of the of, of our board uh, doing the wet calibration in a customer red. The test PCB has gone through a series of wet calibration tests in a customer flow red system. We can see that the board and, and its power supply in the middle, the sensor on the right, the pipe and tank in the in the adjacent, and the computer and software and the, that control the flow calibration process is on the left. The test has been done to all the approaches 2A, 2B, and 2A single-ended si uh, signal. Here the plot of error curve of approach 2A and 2B. Both of them are able to meet 0.2 percent accuracy of reading on the range of uh, 0.5 meter per second up to 2.2 meters per second. Remember, it is more difficult to achieve the accuracy when approaching the lower flow rate. Normally, the 0.5 meter per second is minimum flow rate at which 0.25 accuracy is specified. So, we're doing very well. The single-ended signaling namely the pseudo differential approach to B was tested as well. Its performance was as good as the result of the fully differential configuration while having the cost and error advantage. Thus we decided that the pseudo differential or single ended signaling is the only configuration on our final PCB. Here is the diagram for our final PCB the electromagnetic flow sensor analog front and circuit board with ADSP BF50. I name it as EMF AFE BF504F, somewhat similar to the previous revision, but all the redundant options are removed. The ADSP BF504F digital signal processor is on the board to, to, to add the local control and algorithm capability. The DSP controls the photo 20 milliamp and the frequency pass output to the external flow calibration rig. A simple LCD is, is to display the, the board working status. Two push button switches are controlling the reset and toggling the working mode. Thus, the board can run in a standalone mode that's not, not necessarily to be connected 
to a computer. Once it is loaded with the right operational parameters, the board supports the SCP-S, the smaller S system demonstration platform board from analog devices, to upload the raw ADC samples as well as the flow rate calibration result to the PC software. This is the EM flow meters uh, power supply board. The EMF-FFE-BF50F board is equipped with all necessarily regulated power supplies. One needs a separate power supply board to, to provide the unregulated voltages such as plus minus 15 volts, uh, 24 volts for sensor driver and 24 volts for the field bus communication. The blocks on the right hand side are on the flow meter board showing the voltages and current load needed to power the corresponding circuitries. Here is a photo taken on the final PCB and some of the highlights for the, uh, for the different functions. It has direct interface to the wide range of a generic electromagnetic flow sensor and flow calibration system. The main components building the demos are AD5410, 4 to 20 million current output deck, the ADP2441 box DC to DC regulator, AD8220 Jeffet input instrumentation amplifier to do to amplify the sensor signal and AD7172-2 Sigma Delta ADC. The isolation is done with ADUM 7440X 1KV quad channel digital isolators. And the ADSP BF50F black fan DST with on-chip executable flash to do the signal processing. A quick look at the software graphic user interface on the PC. The, the EMF-AFE-BF50F demo board can be accessed with the GUI software. When, when running, the AD sampling can be displayed and plotted as standard precision converter products from, from ADI. Show is showing the sample plot versus time versus the plus a uh, crystal gram and yeah sorry uh, just uh, start again from the for the page 26 page 26 start over yeah let's have a quick look at the software graphic user interface on the PC the EMF FH demo board can be accessed with this GUI software when running, the ADC samples can be displayed and plotted similar as a standard precision converter products from analog devices. It can show the sample plot versus time and plot the histograms and, and analysis results of noise and resolution bits. And this GUI has also a dedicated flow meter tab. On this tab, it displays the real-time flow rate, the accumulative volume flow rate, and the current and pulse output frequencies. And the histogram on the left-hand side are taken from the two sensor driving phases. To give you an idea of how the noise performance is for each phases. And this is the final design had passed the flow recalibration test. It was tested uh, with two EM flow meter sensors of 25 millimeter and 50 millimeter diameter pipe respectively. Again, 0.2% accuracy of reading was achieved on range 0.5 meter per second and 2.2 meter per second. Here we have a res result comparison 
to the five electromagnetic flow meter products currently on the market. It shows that the typical firmness of our solution is in parallel to these products. Yeah, just as good as it. The uh, uh, exception is a meter four, who use a patented te technique to achieve the better accuracy at a lower flow rate. However, since we don't implement any of the special technique or algorithm to achieve where, where we are, it would be our customer's job to push to the performance for, to further better. Page 30. Something about the center driver circuit. In our demo circuits, we tested a switch mode constant current source steered by a MOSFET edge bridge. We use ADUM7440, the cross-channel accoupler for the isolation and driving the gate. The ADP2441 is configured to provide a constant current output. With this technique, we eliminate we eliminated the losses in the standard current sink and, and improve the efficiency by about 17 percent and reduce the board area by, by more than 80 percent. The conclusion. The oversampling architecture approach from analog devices show big improvements in the circuit board area, power consumption, and material cost. The EMF uh, AFE test circuits have achieved excellent accuracy performance in both bench tests and the flow rep calibration. Our latest Im implementation with the BF504F is good for electromagnetic flow meter customers, further evaluation, and the product development. The collateral and technical support we have published an article on the on the electromagnetic flow sensor on analog, analog dialog. For the technical inquiries, you can send an email to cic at analog.com. The schematic is available for those who contact us and being qualified. After you sign the non-disclosure agreement, you will get access to the schematic this dedicated generated for you. And thank you for watching. I wish you have a pleasant time. I'm going to take questions. Please feel free to ask. So for our first question, can electromagnetic flow meter measure gases or liquids? Yes. Yeah. Good question. Uh, probably can't to measure the gas. By principle, the electromagnetic flow meter can only measure the fluids that have the electrical conductivity. So it cannot measure the, any gas, but it can measure any, any liquids that have the electrical conductivity. For example, water, utility water with water, the acids, yeah, any kind of or, or paper of food or, for example, milk, yeah, beverage, yeah, pharmaceutical industry, what do you use? Okay, uh, our next question is, what are the biggest benefits for using the oversampling architecture? Well, the biggest, the biggest one would be uh, biggest advantage of the over assembly architecture is that uh, it provides the opportunity to reduce the, the components, the, the bond cost, the bureau of material cost, and to reduce the the size of the circuit. So it with the over assembly architecture, the our customer could be able to put the electromagnetic flow transmitter electronics in a smaller package a smaller casing and also it, it allows them to to do more diagnostics since that all the all the flows 
signals of the period is, uh, is, is now digitized by the ADC running at faster speed, unlikely to the traditional signal uh, conditioning where the, the glitches and transients are removed totally. So I think the performance, cost, area, and model diagnostics are major advantages of the digital over assembly architecture has. All right. Our next question, is it possible to use low amplifier gain and still achieve desirable performance? Yes, that's really a good, good question. Yeah, the answer is probably yes, but you could not technically go even lower. The limitation here is both from the analog to digital converter, the noise, as well as the noise from the instrumentation amplifier. As we know that the refer to input noise of the instrumentation amplifier is uh, uh, related to the to its gain. So the more the amplifier gain has, the the lower no uh, RTI noise it is. So if we reduce the the the, the analog gain externally, maybe we will end up seeing more noise coming from uh, coming from the the instrumentation amplifier. And on the on the other hand, if we reduce the analog gain of the instrumentation amplifier, we we may need have more challenging requirements on the on the ADC noise. But of course, the, with the 8071-70X family, the, the latest ultra-low noise Sigma Delta ADC family from analog devices, we're probably all doing OK. But uh, I would say uh, I would say you shouldn't go somewhere even lower than five times. Yes, the gain of five. I would say something gain between five or ten would be good. This concludes today's presentation on behalf of Electronic Design. I'd like to thank you for joining the webcast today. Thank you to Analog Devices and Arrow for sponsoring this event for us today. And have a very productive remainder of the day.